This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. I don't know how it is with women, but a man's lucky if he has two or three fellas he can really call his friends. Especially a guy like me, moving around the way I do. So when I got the letter telling me Mike wanted me to come at once, I didn't ask why, when, or how come. Bartown, the letter said. All I wanted to know was how to get there. At the library, I looked Bartown up. Bartown, population unlisted. I had to look hard, a fly speck on the map. North, north central Canada, north of Great Slave Lake. No roads, no trains, only one way in by planes, private planes. Bar town. So I started counting my money and looking for a charter plane with a pilot willing to take me. I call this transcribed yarn Junk Mine. Bucky. Bucky Miller was a pilot's name. He had a ski plane for charter. He was willing to fly me up to Bar Town. He made his living by being willing. You uh, fly up this way often? Sam, when I brought you Friday, only got me a package to drop. Due back Friday. Flying somebody out Friday? Passenger. Well, there she is down ahead. Bar Town. Doesn't look like much. What there is? Town. <laughs> Looks like somebody sprinkled pepper on the ice. What they call it. I'm sitting down. Sit tight. I waited to ask Bucky about my friend Mike, if he knew Mike. Mike always went on his own. Mike never begged. But I knew these northern bush pilots who fly for the buck and how they climb up. I concentrated on learning what I could about Bartown by watching the bleak dots rush up at the plane from the ice instead. The dots turned into lopsided pine shanties huddling around a big unpainted shed shanties and the mine shaft house. That's all there was. Mining. What was Mike doing, digging down under the ice? Mike McCardle was a butterfly. What was he doing away from the sun? I went on across the ice to the mine house. A beat-up sign flapped in the wind. J.J. Gregg, mine superintendent, the sign said. The man inside didn't even look up. He was sharpening what looked like a throwing knife. You, Gregg, the superintendent... Mind if I come in? Be in, ain't you? It's cold. It's cold out there. One side. Knife might slip. <clears throat> Not bad. Not a bad knife throw. Uh, ain't got it quite through. It's a good throw. You aiming for that big knot hole? Ain't aiming in particular, no. I'm up from Manitoba. Down below. You ain't from Manitoba. Toba's cold, not with them clothes. Fellow'd freeze in Toba this time of year with them clothes. What's the difference where I'm from? Makes no difference where you're from, mister. Difference is, what are you doing here? Looking up somebody. Oughtn't to be hard to find. You always flying around looking up your pals? Sure, he's a friend. Flying costs. Must be an important friend. Know any other kind? What's your friend's name? Mike. Mike McCardle. Lemmy! Lemmy, come in here! I said, Lemmy, out for some stove wood, Jim. What are you doing in there? Been in here over an hour making up your sums. I told you to stay away from them ore tonnage charts. I'm only trying to help you. You know, the incorporation law says you have to report the ore tonnage. Lemmy, you big jerk, come in here! Now, he's probably got a bottle sloshing it up in the shaft head again. I'll slosh around that big jerk's brains. It's, uh... Kind of cold up here, ma'am. Yes. Lonely. Cold goes right through you. I didn't expect to find a woman in Bartown. I'm his wife. The only woman. Only anybody. What do you want? Came up looking for a friend. Here? Mike McCardle. You couldn't miss him. There have been so few men. No, I couldn't. Yes, I couldn't. You here? You here now? Go. Go quick before it happens to you. Get back where you belong. Don't let on. Not one word what I said. 
That's him, Lemmy. Oh, yeah? Yeah? That's him, the fella looking. <laughs> Lemmy, uh, take the fella down to meet his friend. They kept their eyes on me, Jim Gregg, the super, and the human ox he called Lummy. They kept their eyes on me all the way down to the shaft head of the old mine. I remembered her warning, Mrs. Gregg. She warned me to go to get out. She wanted to tell me something more, but she'd been afraid, not of me. Why wouldn't she tell me if Mike was here? What she was afraid, I'd find out. I faked a stumble and risked a look back just before we left daylight behind, but the mine office door was closed. She was nowhere in sight. When I turned my head around, everything went black up front ahead. We were in the mine shaft. I had to play it careful. These were rough boys. Rats. Rats. What did they live on down here? Old. Shaft, old style cut. Shaft's old. Expert. Real expert. Sure you're taking me to see Mike? Keep walking. What's Mike doing down here? Still asking questions, huh? No harm. Any harm asking? I just want to know what Mike's doing. Lummy, uh, this fellow, this fellow's stealing. He's a big one by asking questions. Like you say, boss, big on questions. Yeah, yeah big guy on the end of a shovel and pick. What do you mean? Lummy, hand him a pick. <coughs> I didn't come here for a job. You got one. Yeah. You. Pick. Work across from Mike. Mike, come down here. You got a helper, Mike. What for? I said you got a helper. New man, his name is Steele. He says he's your friend. He's going to help you, Mike. Have a good day. Hello, Mike. Your friend. What's the matter, Mike? Don't you know him? You got no friends. Flew all the way up here to help you, Mike. That ain't no way to treat a friend. Don't want no helper. Don't want nothing from you. You shut up. <laughs> Super boss. Boss talk. You shut up. Let go. Lay off. Lay off of you. What do you want me to do to you? I'm not. Right? I, mean. I show him. I show him, Super. You boss here. I think he's getting it, Lemmy. I think he's getting the idea. Now work those pigs, both of you. Mike, it's me. Too late, rats. What's the matter with you? Me, John. I got your letter. I came right up. Huh? Help her, huh? Rats. All oh, rats. <coughs> you expect me to believe he'd bring a man to help me? <coughs> Two legged rats. All right. Mike was my friend, one of the few real friends a man ever has. Only now he was swinging his pick and looking wild at me, crazy wild, watching me as if he'd never seen me before, watching how I hefted the pick, how I brought it down into the rock. I wanted to stop to ask him what was wrong, what he was doing down here and why he hadn't recognized me, but I couldn't stop. Maybe it was that wild look in his eye, the way he kept looking at me, but I didn't dare break rhythm. I kept working to pick. I'd always been as strong as Mike, but he was hefting his pick like a toy, and mine was getting heavy as lead to me. Knock off. Knock off. You're okay. Thanks. Swing fine. Right along with me. You're all right. Just discovered it, huh? How long are you going to keep this dumb act up? You know me. Not many of them can swing along with old Mike. Maybe, mister, or had you tabbed all wrong? What do you mean, mister? Mike at steel, me. That's got top side. He don't want no one to help me. The super, Greg? You don't trust him? Mike, are you all right? Sure nothing's happened to you? Ever see a mine with only one man digging? No. 
How come you're here? What's this all about? You're no miner. I gotta. I gotta keep digging. Grab your pick. Huh? Back there in the shaft. Now don't look. Let me the watchdog. Let me sneaking back close. Listen. That's why I've been acting funny. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Start digging, Johnny. <coughs> sure, I know you. Nothing the matter with me. <coughs> Only let me some killer. I'll talk later. <laughs> Still there, listening? No, but he won't go far, not him. Heck, John, it's good to see you. That sounds better. Of course I know you. You tell me somebody else in the whole world I know better. You had me worried. Why'd you say you didn't? I had to act that way, Johnny. Didn't want him to know you was my friend, and I sent you the letter. Huh? I want him to be scared, to think you're a government man, and where you come from, there's a lot more like you. How come? All I dared say was come, in case they got a hold of the letter. What's going on? They need uranium, and the whole great slave up here is likely for it. What happened? Ran out of money. I didn't have any luck snooping around these mountains with a Geiger counter. Anyhow, winter set in. No dough, no supplies. I stumbled onto this place. Only one kind of work here, so I said, sure, I'll go down and mine. Like you notice, from the outside, looks legit, like a real big place. Yeah. Only when I got down in here, I found out nobody was working down here. You were the only one? Only Lummy and him around. How come? Why the front? Don't know. What do you mean you don't know? You're not dumb. You've been around. Don't know. Well, you got eyes. Don't know what's going on topside. I'm stuck down in the mine. You go up every night. The heck I do. Why, well, I sneaked the letter out to you. Gave it to the bush pilot. They won't let me up. What do you mean, they won't? You saw Lummy. You see Greg with his throw knives. Ever see their guns? You were always able to take care of yourself. They don't let up watching me one minute. I got me a cot back down the shaft. They bring me down grub. I tried breaking out once. Here. Huh? Yeah. Bad. Right through the shoulder. Still hurts. Greg, throw knife. Practices all the time. And spirit right at 50 feet. Nice guy. I'll get him. See why he didn't want me around. Don't want nobody around. Just lummy. His two-legged rats. Ever ship out any of your ore? Ore's like him. Ore's no good. Junk rock. Junk. No gold in it. No good. Mine run by a company? Never saw nobody up here from no company. No engineers. Only once I saw another guy down here. City man he looked by the way he dressed. Mm -hmm. Stood way back in the shaft and looked at me. Think I heard Greg call him Fred. Must be a company incorporated back of it somewhere. Don't know. Don't know why any company would want a no good mine like that. No legitimate company. Huh? This gold ore. Think it assays uranium? Ore? Ore's played out. I've got a new way to extract uranium from gold ore residues. You learn about that prospecting. Uranium. Guess? Yeah. Guess it might smell down a trace. Trace might be enough. See what you mean? Bait. Sucker bait. You mean a company selling phony shares outside? Something on phone. Hey, you, mate! Bring your tools. Yeah. What do you want? Back in here. Both of you. What? You shut up. Only asking. You shut up. What do you want, Greg? In there. The old branch, she's a man trap. The bottom's caved in. She's fallen ten feet. In there. Shoring's half caved in. What makes you think we're going to squeeze in there? Get in. What makes you think we're going to dig anywhere? Watch it. I see it. <coughs> yeah. Knife. Talk's big, waving a knife. I get a real truth. Just for you. Don't give him an excuse, John. Into that passageway. Squeeze in. Stop moving, Lemmy! Come on, you! You came here, mister, nobody asked you. Only one thing I'm gonna do in a mind. You're gonna do it. Deep! Give my flying start, Lemmy. Stop! You can snoop around all you want to. Mike! Mike, watch it! I heard Lummy laugh, and then for a second, that's all I heard. Cold. I felt cold. Ice. No, it was water. I was in water. The water was like ice. Okay, boys. Gee. Then I heard him. Greg. The sound of his voice cleared my head. I opened my eyes. Dig yourself a hole. 
He was sitting up on a rock crystal ledge. His shoes almost touched the water. Mike and I were standing in the water up to our chests. What's the idea? We're half under. Dig in our drains, you crazy scotch. Chief! Passage flooded. She's still flooded. Water's rising. <laughs> Chief! He's crazy steel <laughs> off his mind. I tell you, the water's rising. I can feel it coming up my shirt. You did! Can't, can't keep our footing. That's the idea. It'll be an accident. All right, Dave. <laughs> Keep your head, Mike. Bottom up. Torn up. Can't find the bottom. Hold on to me. Dig. No bottom. Shoes. Close. Your shoes, Mike. Mine shoes are heavy. Kick them off. No. Chipper. My hand chipper. Chipper's heavy. Yeah, I feel it. Chipper's still tied to me. Pulling me. <laughs> I'll Dig. get the knot. I'll get the knot. The water's ice in my legs. Legs go ice. <laughs> I got it, Mike. You hear me? I got the knot loose. The chipper. The rock chipper. I got it, Mike. Underwater here. Got it right in my hand. I can't hold out. You saw where I was sitting. On the ledge. The oar ledge right over the water. I'm going underwater, Mike. I'm going under. Over to that ledge. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. Strong enough to swim along under with me? Try. Come on. Sink. That's it. Just like we're drawing. Hey, what's the matter, fellas? You get tired? Hey, look, Lenny. The fellas got tired. They finally had the answer. <laughs> I heard him laugh. The laugh came down thin through the water and tapped against my ears like the cry of some crazy animal. The laughing sounded good to me. As long as I heard it, I knew they hadn't discovered Mike and I were crawling underwater, crawling slow along the bottom of the flooded passage. Then my fingers grabbed the bottom of the ledge. My lungs were begging for air. I wanted to get to the chipper, let myself break water for that air. But I lifted the chipper instead. I dug it in, dug it into the base of the ledge again and again where the edge of the ore crystal shone like brittle silver. Then I braced my feet and Mike and I pulled and the ledge bottom cracked. It cracked right where I knew it would and it tumbled Greg right in. Ah! Tommy! Tommy! Help! Get him, Mike! Tommy! Get me out! I'm coming, boy! I'll take the ox. Get him, Mike. I'll get the no good scut. I'll fix him, Super. Let him be dead for falling. No! No, man, the tenement! Mike! Duck, go down on him! Uh, 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 the rope's falling in! Lamid finished it. His clumsy weight had finished what I started, spreading the crack in the vein of crystal, breaking the crystal arch that held the roof and sides in. Dark. The rock slide had knocked out the lamps they'd been wearing, too. Too dark to see. I felt him around in the dark for Mike. He'd been beside me ever since we tumbled Greg in. But all I felt was water, water all around. I was alone, treading water in the dark. But then I felt rock under my feet, and I hoisted myself up. Enough blocks from the cave in and fallen in to build up the bottom of a flooded passage. I hoisted myself up of what was left of the ledge. My fingers slid over something smooth and shiny. Too smooth for a rock. A lamp. Lummy's mine lamp, crushed and buried in the cave in. I scrabbed away loose dirt and rock. I rolled the rocks down and away. Mike, are you all right? Holding on the side. Keep holding. I found the lamp. The matches. Matches wet. I got a lighter. Hold on. Lighter won't work. Dry on it. Dry on it off. Hold on. Works. Light, Mike. We got light. Light. Never thought I'd see it again. Why? <laughs> Gone, Steel. You sure you're all right? I tell you she's gone. Looked all over, all through the mine house, the living quarters. Gone. Not a sign. I guess we can't tell her about Lummy and her husband. Just like rats. Drown like rats. What you find in Greg's mine books? I'm finished looking. 
Find anything? Enough to prove Greg was running a swindle. Uh huh. Like you thought. Phony stock swindle. Don't know how many he made suckers selling him phony mine stock. He must have been ready to blow with the loot. Must have figured me as some kind of a government man. Up here to check on him, huh? My coming made him suspicious. Especially the act you put on, not knowing me. Man who's crooked's always got to be suspicious. The only thing bothers me. Yeah? The loot. All that money he made in the swindle. No trace of it. Not a dime. Looked for that, too. Not a dime. Money gone. Mrs. Gregg gone. Now I wonder. Or am I getting unreasonable suspicious, too? Figures. You going in after? You going to hang around for the fun? Fun? Two dead ones floating down there in the mine. Someone's going to miss them. Going to want to know how come. Maybe ask a lot of questions about them. Maybe now about the mine. Lummy got his from a falling rock. What they call accidental. I saw him take the rock slide when he fell in. But uh, Greg was near you. What happened to Greg? Greg, no good. Was scut. Just plain never no good. Rocks didn't fall near him. You were close to him. Greg, he get killed accidentally too? Yeah. You were near him in the water, in the dark. You're no killer, Mike. But you had the chance. You hated him. It ain't no good to hate a man like I hated him. You kill him, Mike? Hate. Funny thing. No, I didn't kill him. He was yelling, screaming in the dark. I could hear him yelling, screaming something awful. Funny thing, hearing him, hearing everything falling in. Something happened like I was cured. Funny thing. Then I didn't hate him. Didn't hate him no more then. Hey, who's flying? I've been waiting out by my plane an hour. Looking for a passenger, Bucky? I got an order for a Friday pickup. Told you that when I brought you in. To pick up Mrs. Gregg? Flew her out this morning. She laid out the emergency stop signal in the snow. Oh, then she wasn't the passenger you were supposed to pick up today. Told you she put out the special signal in the snow. Got nothing to do with this pickup. Got an order for this pickup last week. Where'd you fly her? Up the line. Where up the line? Up to Four Rivers to wait for the regular airline. Airliner? Where? You'll have to ask her, mister. Now, I got an order and I'm wasting gas. Who's flying? You want to stay, Mike? No. No, I don't want to stay. But I got no place to go. You got no reason to hang around here. I believe you about Greg. Come on. We'll catch that regular airline. You can never tell what you're going to run into. And that's the way it was up at Bartown. But there was more to it than that. It was what happened to Mrs. Gregg and where her trail led Mike and me, straight to jail. And that's where we'll go next week, on the trail of Mrs. Gregg and a package full of $100 bills. It's a real adventure I like to call Criss Cross. Heard with me on today's transcribed John Steele adventure were Jack Orison, Mary Ashworth, Maurice Tarplin and Charlie Holmes. I'm Don Douglas. So until next week then and crisscross. Remember, adventure is where you find it, but don't look for it. It may find you. <laughs> Remember to be with us next week for another episode in the series John Steele, Adventurer. Remember, a country is known by its people. What people think of your country depends on you. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.